Hey, 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 this is Mr. A here to help you with NF2 estimating fractions, sums, and differences. All right, here we go. We're going to take a look at a couple of the questions from the standards masteries. We're going to look at a few strategies that can help us to be more successful, more accurate on this mastery. And then at the end, you're going to take a few questions and see if you are ready to go. And if you're not, please rewatch this or come and ask me questions for help. Um, I know that you can do this. So this question says, which expressions have a value less than one half, between one half and one, or greater than one? Drag each expression to the correct column in the table. So there's six um, expressions here, and this one was actually partial credit. So you could earn part of the points if you got some of them correct. But we're going to know strategies to help us get them all correct. Here's what I would suggest. Look for the ones that are pretty obvious right away, right away that would fit in the less than one half and the greater than one categories. So let's take a look at this one. Three and seven eighths minus two and two ninths. Well, if I know eighths and I'm thinking, okay, well, eight eighths is one, seven eighths is really close to that. So this is close to four. And even before I subtract or change anything, even if this was rounded up to three, two and a half, or two, it doesn't matter because four minus two is two, four minus three is one, and four minus two and a half is two and a half. And so I know that this one has to be greater than one because the difference, no matter how I round it, is going to go up because this is so close to four. So I'm gonna write the three and seven eighths minus two and two ninths in this category here. That to me stands out. If I look at this one, one twelfth is very close to zero twelfths. It's only one jump away. So this fraction is a very small value. And three tenths, well, if I think of a number line, and I know that I have tenths, right? If I have zero and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If mine is at three, and I know that half of ten is five, Three tenths is only two jumps away from one half, five tenths. But it's really only three jumps away from zero. So it's pretty close that way as well. So if I'm thinking, yes, this does round up to a half, but it is less than one half, right? Three tenths is smaller than five tenths. And one twelfth, we know is very close to zero. There's no way that this one is going to be greater than a half because this is less than a half, this is less than a half. So I know that this whole sum is going to be less than one half. So I've done this one and I've done this one without really having to do much work. I'm just thinking about what is reasonable. Let's take a look at this one. One and one eighth minus five six. Well, I know one eighth is really close to zero eighths. So I'm gonna round one and one eighth, whoops, to one. And if I'm gonna subtract five sixths, right? Well, gosh, that's really close to one as well. Well, one minus one is zero, so that difference is less than one half. So this one is also going to go over here, one and one eighth minus five six, because they're both so close to one that there's no way their difference can be between one and a half or greater than one. So I've got three left here, four fifths and eight ninths. Well, four fifths, again, is really close to one whole. Eight ninths is really close to one whole. Well, one plus one is two, so this one has to be greater than one. So, so far, I haven't had to solve any of these. I haven't had to find common denominators. I've just used my reasoning and my estimation skills because they were so close to their values. So let's take a look at these last two. Two and two thirds minus one and three fourths. Two thirds and three fourths are those tricky fractions that can really go either way. If we think of two thirds, well, gosh, it seems like it's close to three thirds, but it also seems close to a half. We can multiply it by a fraction, an equivalent fraction to one, and get it to have an even denominator. And so I know that half of six is three. Well, four six is only one jump away from one half. It's two jumps away from one whole, and it's four jumps away from zero. So I know that it's got to be closest to a half. So two and two thirds is going to round to about two and a half. And one and three fourths, we talked about three fourths. It's one jump away from four fourths and one jump away from two fourths, but it's usually best to round up. Well, gosh, that's going to be about two. So two and a half minus two is just one half. So that's not greater than one, that's not less than one half, so that's going to be between our one half and one. So we're gonna put two and two thirds 
we're going to subtract 1 and 3 fourths, and we're going to get between. So the reason that I know that it's in that category, that difficult category, because it exactly equals 1 half. And I also know that 2 thirds and 3 fourths are both very close to the other rounding areas. Like 2 and 2 thirds could have easily rounded to 3. 1 and 3 fourths could have easily rounded to 1 and a half. So it's very close, but I know that it's going to equal there. 1 fourth plus 3 fifths. That's another close one. Let's say that that strategy of just estimating or reasonableness is not really helping you, but you mastered the strategy of adding and subtracting. So let's do that. 1 fourth plus 3 fifths. Well, I know a common denominator here is going to be 20 because 4 times 5 is 20. Well, 4 times 5 is 20, so 1 times 5 is 5. 5 times 4 is 20, so I have to do 3 times 4, which is 12. I'm going to get 17 twentieths. Well, 20 twentieths is one whole, and 10 twentieths is one half. So do we see how that is right in between one half and one whole? So this last one is going to go up here, okay? So far, so good. Let's take a look at one more question. It says, Jennifer is making trail mix. She uses six and three eighths ounces of dried fruit and two and two thirds ounces of coconuts. Which of these is the best estimate, keyword there, for how much more dried fruit Jennifer uses than coconut? How much more? That's like saying Mr. A has five cookies and Mrs. Kitzler has two cookies how much more, oops, Mr. A has six because he can't count apparently. How much more does Mr. A have than Mrs. Kitzler? Well, how much more means subtract. So six minus two is four. So do we notice how we need to subtract here? It's not an addition one. So let's take a look, six and three-eighths minus two and two-thirds. These all look very close. So we're gonna do two strategies. We're just gonna subtract them and get an answer and we're also gonna estimate. Let's estimate first. Six and three-eighths. Well, I know that 4 eighths is a half, so I'm going to round this one to about 6 and a half. 2 and 2 thirds, that's one of those tricky ones. It also equals 4 six, which we know 4 six is only one away from 3 six. So I'm going to round this one to 2 and a half and subtract. 6 minus 2 is 4. 1 half minus a half is 0. So I get an estimate of about 4. So that means it's got to be this one or this one can't be this one and it can't be this one because neither of those have four in the answer. So let's solve it to see what it actually is. So six and three eighths minus two and two thirds. I'm going to use hmm, 24 as a common denominator because eight, 16, 24, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. So this is going to be six and this was times three, this was times three, so this would be six and nine twenty-fourths, and this would be times eight, and this would be times eight. So this would be two and 16 24ths. So many people I saw said that, oh, nine minus 16, that's seven. No, you can't take a bigger number away from a smaller number. We need to regroup. And remember, we do that by taking away from the whole and adding the denominator to the numerator because 24 24 is equal to one whole. So that's why I'm adding the denominator to the numerator. So 24 plus 9 I know would be 34 is plus 10, so this would be 33. Now I can subtract 33 minus 16 is going to be 17. So I have 17 24ths and 5 minus 2 is 3. So my estimate was 4, but I get something that's 3, right? Well, if I know anything, half of 24 is 12. So I would say that this is a little bit greater than half because 12 24ths would be half. I have 17 24ths. So this means that it's greater than 3 and a half and it's got to be less than 4. So that means it has to be C. My answer is between 3 and a half and 4. So do you notice how we did both strategies to solve this one? This was a tough one. Sometimes you need to do more work than what it might seem in the very beginning. Estimate and then also solve. I know this mastery was a tough one, but use your skill of adding and subtracting fractions. Find those common denominators, look for what makes sense, and just show me your best effort. So don't be a poop emoji. 
You're gonna rock this out. Take your time on these questions and show me what you've got.